Okay, let's solve for the angle in this particular triangle using the cosine function. So that's what we're going to be doing in this particular video. And this is part of a little mini series that I'm doing on um, the sine, cosine, and tangent. These are basic trigonometric functions. So if you are new to trigonometry, maybe you haven't even learned trigonometry, this is like the basics of it. And anyone can learn it, okay? You don't have to be intimidated uh, about it at all. Of course, trigonometry has much more advanced things. But what we're going to be doing is showing you the power of basic right angle trigonometry. And we're going to be obviously focusing in on the cosine function uh, for this particular video. But before we get going, uh, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Taba Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over many years, I've constructed what I'd like to believe is one of the most robust online math help programs there is. So if you need to take a full math course or if you need um, help in your current math course, I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. Um, my math help program it's taken me years and years and years to build, as I said, all right? Full, complete, massive, comprehensive lessons, really get into the detail, really get into the topics. And there's nothing worse than having a problem and then going into your answer key in your textbook and just having an answer, okay? There's nothing worse than that because you're like, well, how did, how did, how was that answer, you know, reached? How was it solved? Well, in my program, I have video solutions for every single problem okay i go through and i'm doing you know uh, i'm solving every single homework problem let's just say that much okay so very very robust you can check that out in the description of this video if you like now i'm a big stickler on notes i'm just going to tell you right up front uh, i'm assuming that you're in some sort of math class if you're checking this out uh here's the deal over decades of teaching i'm going to tell you what i have come to have this strong belief as a math teacher because i've seen it those who have great notes do great in math, okay? And the reverse is true. If your notes are weak uh, or unorganized, sloppy, or you have no notes, then you're probably not going to do well in math. So, you know, take an honest look at your notes and start improving. Right? Everyone can improve on their notes, okay? So, but in the meantime, you need something to study from, right? Just, just like, hey, you got to study from something. Uh, you can't always just be watching videos. So um, I offer notes, okay? I'm going to leave a link to those in the description of this video. Those would include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, trigonometry, okay? So if you want to pick up a pair of notes or check out my math help program, you can uh, follow the links in the description of this video. All right, let's get into basic trig, okay? It's an excellent topic. Because trigonometry helps us solve all kinds of problems. So I use this example. Um, is let's say um, I have a little tree here, okay. And if you watch my other videos, you've seen this example before. And I want to know the height of the tree, okay. How tall is this tree? Well, you know, again, I'm not going to climb up to the top of the tree and then just like use a tape measure to measure the tree. That's going to be very difficult, if not impossible. But what if I could walk out? from the base of the tree, like say 300 feet. And then at this point, I can look up from the ground and somehow measure this angle. Uh, let's say this angle was 23 degrees to the top. From this point to the top of that uh, tree, that angle, okay, I just kind of used this little protractor device, was 23 degrees. Well, armed with this information, assuming the tree is pretty much perpendicular to the ground, Armed with this information, I could find the height of the tree, I could find this, I could find this angle, I could do everything, okay? But I need basic trig, basic trig. And that's why trigonometry is so powerful, okay? All right, so let's get into how we uh, solve these basic right angle uh, problems. Now, the first thing is this. What I'm going to be talking about, all right, uh, let's just bring up sine cosine and tangent obviously i'm focusing in on cosine but i've done videos on sine and tangent because these are they're kind of their cousins or these are the basic trigonometric ratios okay and uh we call them ratios because in a right triangle first of all these right here apply only to triangles that have a 90 degrees in the corner if i have a triangle like so okay these do not apply, 
Now, I'm not saying trigonometry couldn't solve a, pro a triangle problem like this, but that's another topic, okay? We're going to be focusing on basic right angle triangles, okay? So this angle here is 90 degrees, okay? All right. So knowing that, I have this angle, and I got to... Uh, I have three sides of this triangle, and I want to give some descriptions to these sides. So the longest side of a right triangle is called the hypotenuse, so we'll label that H, and it's opposite of where the 90 degrees is. Now, this angle right here, okay, if I'm looking at this angle and I'm like, what is this side that is opposite of it, okay? This side over here is opposite of this angle. We'll just call it O for opposite. Okay, and the side that's right next to the angle, we'll call that uh, adjacent because it's adjacent to its angle. Okay, so these sides of this right triangle, we're going to label, okay, are always described as O, A, and H. Now, if this right triangle, let's look at it this way. If I'm looking at my angle this way, okay, here's my hypotenuse, but now where is my opposite? Okay, for this angle, the opposite is here. Okay, and the adjacent is here. So it all depends on where your angle is located uh, to pair where your opposite and adjacent is going to be. Okay, so not always going to be here. Not, it's not always going to be A or O here. It could be A or O here. It all depends on what angle you're solving for. Okay. All right. Now, along with that, we need to now get really good with our singing, our little phrase here, and we got to do this. So, ka toa. All right. Now don't be like, hey, what's this guy talking about? Well, there's a purpose to this. You're, I'm sure, pretty sure your great grandparents remember this. Well, this little phrase is going to help you remember uh, which uh, sides to use to to solve for whatever you're solving for. Okay. For example, I just circled this C. Okay, because this means the cosine is going to be in. It's going to involve the adjacent and the uh, hypotenuse. So the cosine of this angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, okay? So we remember this little phrase here, so katoa, okay? And because it's easy to confuse with tangent and sine. So let's just do sine here real quick. So what do you think the sine's gonna be? Well, it involves O and H. You guessed it, it's the opposite over the hypotenuse and then the tangent, you guessed it because you're super smart, that is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. Okay, so this is what we want, and anytime we're comparing two sides of anything, we call that a ratio. All right, it's a fraction. That's all it is. Okay, we're going to um, compare for the cosine of this angle. We're going to compare this side with that side. All right, that's why these are described as trigonometric ratios. All right, now let's actually put this into practice now and solve this problem. All right, so. We're going to be using the cosine, okay, uh, trigonometric functions. Now, here, you can see my triangle, I have all the lengths of this right triangle, so that's pretty cool, but that doesn't mean I can, I can uh, uh, find the angle. Now, if you're familiar with the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, that's an awesome theorem and one that we're going to need with these basic trig problems, but we don't need it in this particular problem because we have all the lengths of the triangles. This only has to, uh, is only going to help us with the lengths of a right triangle. But when it comes to angles, guess what? We're going to have to break out some basic trigonometry here. All right, so again, we're going to focus on using the cosine for this function. And we talked about the cosine is so katoa, right? So this is going to be the co uh, cosine is going to be that a and h, so it's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So here's my angle. My adjacent is 4, okay, and the hypotenuse, always the longest side, is 5. So the cosine of this angle is 4 over 5, and uh, that is the decimal point 8, okay? So now, this is where we need help from either a textbook or a calculator, all right? And yeah, well, preferably a calculator, a basic scientific calculator. You can pick those guys up at CVS, Walmart, uh, Walgreens, or pretty much anywhere for like 10 to 20 bucks, okay? And if you don't have a scientific calculator, you should get one because uh, if you're using your cell phone, 
your cell phone is like a basic calculator. Sometimes it has somewhat of a scientific calculator if you switch modes. But get yourself, uh, invest in a scientific calculator. And if you're going to be doing any real serious math study, you know, like college algebra or pre-calculus or algebra 2, you might want to consider uh, spending even more money on a graphing calculator. But um, here, I need to be able to answer the question of this. What angle has a cosine of point 8? What angle has a cosine of point 8? Well, in the old school uh, days, right, years and years and years ago, when I went to school, uh, yeah, I mean, there were still calculators for sure, but we also had our textbooks had tables in the back. Now, some current new modern textbooks may or may still have these tables, but a lot of them uh, do not. But basically, you can look this up. You can look it up. You just go to cosine, and you look at point 8, and it would tell you the angle in degrees. But that's kind of like an old way of doing things. What we want to do is use a calculator. And the calculator that you're going to need needs to have these buttons on it, okay, or these functions, all right? So obviously, we want to use the cosine button, but we're not going to be using the cosine button specifically. We're going to be using this guy right here, all right? This is what we call arc cosine. So to get to that, you need to get to your second button on your calculator and look at the cosine button, and you should see like on the calculator itself, not the button, you should see like that cosine negative one. That's arc cosine, okay? So you're gonna type this guy in, and what this is gonna do is we're gonna plug in what the cosine of the angle is into this arc uh, function right here, okay? So we're gonna go cosine negative one of 0.8. It's gonna look up and tell us the angle that has a cosine of 0.8. I'm like, hey, this triangle has a cosine, that angle right there has a cosine of 0.8. What's the angle? Well, our calculator will tell us that when we plug it in using this function like that, and we'll get 36.86 degrees, okay? That's approximately the answer, and you want to make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. There's other ways we can measure angles in um, trigonometry. The other way is called radians. And uh, oftentimes, so many students uh, will forget, especially more advanced trigonometry, that somehow they have inadvertently put their calculator in the radian mode, okay? You have to check, go in, every calculator has a mode button, hit that thing and you should see DEG, RAD, you know, but if you switch to radians, uh, go back to degrees. If we're working in degrees, if not, you'll get the wrong answer. And I've seen countless students do everything perfect, but unfortunately their calculator was in radian mode. They forgot they were messing around with it and they forgot to put it in degree modes and they get the wrong answer. Then they end up like this. Okay. And then when I tell them it's minus three off their papers, they go like that. And then they go like this. And it's very sad. And that's the hardest part of being a math teacher. But yeah, typically I wasn't that bad. I wasn't that, I wasn't that hard. I would make my point clear, then I would, uh, you know, give my students opportunities to improve, okay? But listen, sometimes, you know, you got to, uh, you know, there's got to be consequences to not focusing. Our math is kind of discreet right in that way, right? Um, another thing, too, just speaking about grading, is sometimes, you know, I would only take a point or two off, especially if my students showed me everything. Like, they showed me they were no, they, they did all their work, and they were nice and neat and clear, and I could understand, oh, perfect, perfect, good, good, good. Oh, boy, they were in radiance. Okay, maybe I'm a document to a couple of points. But if, um, you know, they were sloppy, and they were like, hey, here's my answer, well, then, you know, then I would just be, like, really mean. And then, you know, then, you know, they would be like, ah, you know, well, listen, you know, uh, being a math teacher, you know, comes with, you know, math teacher likes to uh, induce mathematical pain on students by taking away uh, too many points. But sometimes, you know, you got to make your point clear. And that goes to my final point is watching this video okay, about cosine is definitely helpful. Okay, You're going to learn something, but you're not going to master it or really be able to do these problems on your own unless you practice. you got to practice and you got to put this stuff in your notes. Okay, So a couple... Uh, Last thoughts. One, hey, if you enjoy this video, uh, please consider smashing that like button. So that's a quick little thought. But the others are, um, when it comes to math, uh, and, and as far as what I do, I love teaching math. 
I have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my channel that can help you out if you like my teaching style. So that's a resource for you. And of course, uh, you can find uh, other resources to help you. My best resource by far is my math help program. Again, uh, that and the notes you can find in the description uh, of this video. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.